Today we're talking about new islands in the South Pacific. And by the end of this episode, some of you might be pining for the good old days when massive destructive volcanoes were the only thing making those islands. Because... Right, we continue our look this morning at what China does not want you to see. The United States says the superpower is reclaiming land in the South China Sea. Artificial islands under construction could become military bases. Oh man, glad I passed middle school education before I had to memorize even more South Pacific islands. I will never forgive you, Wellington, New Zealand. And here, I thought the only man-made island in that region would be South Korea if the talks didn't go well. Well, according to a recent satellite photo on their own man-made island in the middle of the South Pacific, the Chinese military has built 400 buildings. Although, I'm disappointed to report that none of them have been listed on Airbnb. Come on, China, you're making beachfront property in one of the most beautiful places in the world and not one hotel? Man, if this won't get people to enlist in their military, nothing will. So what's the problem? Because this seems pretty cut and dry. Well, it's that these islands that China is making happen to be next to the Sprightly Islands. And oh god, Sprightly Islands, I can already tell that this is going to be one of those problems caused by a British man with a pen and a map saying to himself, they all look Asian to me. The Chinese islands are the turquoise dots that happen to be very much on the Philippine side of the Philippine claim line, along with military installations from Vietnam, Taiwan, and Malaysia, although China is the only one courteous enough to bring their own land. So the first question is why? I mean, this is a lot of effort to put into getting a little chain of islands in the middle of the ocean. Is China really this desperate for beachfront property? I can think of no other reason why a country would start setting up military bases in an area claimed by multiple other countries. China claims the entire South China Sea, including all the Spratly Islands. Beneath this vast claim may lie billions of tons of oil and gas. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's the number one cause of invasions outside of a quest for world domination or your country being Poland. Now, the modern day history of these islands is a story of true international mismanagement, starting with 1870, when they were first turned into a micronation by a British guy. As you can imagine, this worked out great. Then, 17 years later, in 1887, France, who thought their colony, Vietnam, controlled it, gave these islands to China. Oh, great start, guys! Never fear though, because being the great deal makers they were, 13 years later in 1990, French Vietnam said the islands were theirs again. Well, they had the biggest warships. Finally, we were spared from the drama and things got simple when... The Japanese invasion of the Philippines was conducted on schedule. Wait, could they have belonged to the Philippines? Because that was an American colony at that time, so maybe I do have a dog in this fight. Eh. It doesn't matter anymore, because they were Japanese now. For about six years, until 1945, when China kicked them out and reclaimed the islands for themselves. Now, France sent warships to try and evict the Chinese a few times, but we didn't know there was a ton of oil at that time, so no one really cared. They just wanted a place to park boats going across the ocean. Then came 1951, when... Francisco Peace Conference comes Premier Shigeru Yoshida. Accepting the treaty terms, he pledges that Japan is a new nation dedicated to peace, democracy, and freedom. Now, this was a weird time because the Soviet Union firmly declared that China owned the Spratly Islands. An argument that, for whatever reason, didn't really seem to resonate with the Americans overseeing this conference. Again, nobody really cared about these islands. So when French Vietnam delegation said, you know what? We'll take them. Nobody objected. Five years later, in 1956, something else weird happened. The vice foreign minister of Vietnam received a Chinese representative and said something truly perplexing. We looked at the data and it turns out that these islands were in fact yours during the Song Dynasty in the 3rd century. What do you know? 
That same year, 1956, the Philippines finally broke their silence and said, you know what, these islands are ours. To which Communist China, Nationalist China, South Vietnam, France, the United Kingdom, and Netherlands all said, yeah, no. And you know you're really pushing the boundaries when somehow you get the Netherlands to speak up. Two years later, things really started heating up though, because in just a few years earlier, in 1954, we split Vietnam into a communist portion and a French colonial portion. And I think we all know how that ended up. In the Green and Bronze Conference Hall at Geneva, the last hours of the Indochina War were played out. Viet Minh delegates agreed the truth with Vietnam and French representatives. Monsieur Mendes France, the French Premier, had triumphed. So now we had the Northern Communist Vietnam saying, you know what, that's China's land. Well, we had French Vietnam saying, no, it's ours. And the Philippines in the corner saying, we're still here, you know. Then three years after that, in 1961, hey, that's the same year the United States took over fighting in Vietnam from the French, South Vietnam started setting up claims on individual islands in the chain. Then finally, seven years later in 1968, someone invaded when the Philippines sent troops and annexed the region. To which the global consensus was, glad that's over with. And finally, after years of some of the most passive aggressive warring I've ever seen in that region, it got incorporated into the Philippines Palawan district. And that's where our story peacefully ends. Oh wait, no, because in 1973, oil was discovered there. And soon after, every country that had ever had a citizen visit those islands was priming its flag. Hey, it takes oil to start a fire. We're talking Malaysia, Brunei, a unified Vietnam, China, and Taiwan. And at this point, people were actually started to die, with China attacking Vietnamese troops in that Philippine region. Yeah, it's confusing, and killing 70 of them in order to occupy some reefs. Now, before I keep going, just so you don't kill me in the comments, here are the country's actual territorial justifications. China claims that they've owned the Paracel and Spratly Islands, including the surrounding waters, since the 3rd century. Archaeological finds from the 5th century support this claim. However, Vietnam says that they officially documented their rights to the islands back in the 17th century. This is well before China legally staked its claim in the 19th century. The Philippines, on the other hand, claim dominion based on proximity, as the Spratly Islands are closest to them. Meanwhile, Malaysia and Brunei have used the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea to say that their exclusive economic zones give them rights to parts of the South China Sea. Great, okay, you got all that? Interestingly enough, in 2017, one of the countries disputing ownership of the region actually had the balls to sell Spratly Island oil when Vietnam made a deal with Exxon. As of April 2nd of this year, that deal is still definitely on, which, wow, I wasn't expecting Vietnam to emerge victorious in this fight, but good on them. Recently, we're seeing some interesting updates, because who has two thumbs in a UN International Criminal Court investigation against him? This guy. Yes, Rodrigo Duterte. The one political leader I can think of that I wouldn't want to have a beer with for fear he'd embarrass me. He'd recently joked that the Philippines should be made a province of China, and that if China were a woman, he'd woo her. Hey Philippines, looking for the subtle nuance of a Trump diplomat yet? At least his jokes are about consensual relationships this time, unlike his normal time in the comedy circuit. Second rape joke, classy. Oh man, Duterte, I'm not used to my political leaders relying on shock comedy to win over a crowd. I'd tell you the joke, but seriously, it's bad and children could be watching. Anyways, the guy who puts the dick in Dictator had said of the Chinese military buildup in the South China Sea, It's really intended for those who think China thinks we'll destroy them, and that is America. We are not part of it. Ignore the missiles there. They are not for us. Did I mention how badly this guy sucks? Now I want to make a quick distinction. In this last part, it might sound like I'm against the idea of China running the show in the South China Sea. I'm neutral. I'm just shooting the messenger. It's like how Hitler created single-payer healthcare in Germany. Hmm, maybe that's a good idea, but not a great guy. 
All right, so Duterte is fine with China building these militarized islands in the Philippines because they would only be used for the purposes of bombing the United States. Many people were a little shocked by this complete turn of Philippine policy regarding these islands though, considering that on July 12th, 2016, when the Philippines sued China in an international court, the tribunal ruled that China's claims to historic rights or other sovereign rights or jurisdictions related to the Nine Dash Line are unlawful. Which, wow, that's a way to start. That pretty much invalidates their entire claim. I could probably stop there, but it went on to say, The island building project infringed the Philippines' sovereign right to its exclusive economic zone and continental shelf. It went on to talk about how China was infringing on the Philippines' sovereign right to use their non-living natural resources and fishing rights. Yeah, there was a weird amount that went into fishing rights for some reason, but hey, fishermen got a fish. That said, Philippines, it doesn't look like you'll be enforcing the ruling, so we'll just keep buying your oil from Vietnam. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, if you want to support nonpartisan comedic reporting, please subscribe to my channel and like below. Thank you for watching.